Well, hello everyone and welcome to Health Chats Among Friends. My name is Deidre Kindred. I'm a nurse advocate, educator, and navigator. And tonight on Health Chats Among Friends, I have my good friend Nick here with the Sure Source, and he's going to be talking to us about his services there. But before we get into that, we're going to find out more about Nick. Nick, say hi. Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, so excited to, ha to have me on this, Deidre. I really appreciate it. From Dallas to Fort Worth, we cover it all. Yes. So ex ex awesome. excited to be excited to be here. Um, I moved to Dallas back in uh, October of last year to jump into mental health, and I tell you what, it has been it has been like mind blowing. Oh, I um, it. It, it, it really it really has like. Uh, like from an emotional standpoint, a financial standpoint, like career standpoint, it has really been um, an amazing experience. And it, it was really full circle for me. Um, never worked in mental health. Always worked in operations. So That's going to be my run, question. Run, help, help businesses run, help them flow. I've always liked healthcare because there's always a good ethical like piece to it. And I jump into this mental health industry. And the first place I was taken to was an assisted living facility. Mm -hmm. Yo, Deidre, I'm telling you, it was like mind blowing. I, I was raised by my grandma and my grandpa. When I was in, in high school, I was a junior. My grandfather had a stroke, ended up in a nursing home. Oh. Uh, I never seen my grandpa so frustrated all the time. I never understood why he was frustrated. So I'm going to regress, not digress. I, I'm in an assisted living facility in Denton and this gentleman comes into our bingo game and he's frustrated, he's pissed off, he's mad. And the lady says, he's like, well, that's just Johnny being Johnny. I'm like, what? I ended up spending some time with Johnny. His kids took his car keys away. His wife passed away. His only son moved to Arkansas. He has to depend on somebody to go get his groceries. Like, he's frustrated because he, he has lost so much autonomy. Independence. So I'm driving home, DJ, and I'm like, that was my grandpa when I was in high school. I never understood why my grandpa was so upset. And, and it, and it kind of clicked to me. And that's when I said, you know what? There's not that many counselors in the state of Texas to fill the need of what we need. Let's narrow the focus on to Medicare recipients, seniors. You know, and, and that's where this whole healthcare thing for me, mental health, and just kind of exploded for me, you know, is it's a population that's not only underserved, but we normalize behaviors that don't need to be normalized. Oh, they don't, they don't need to be that frustrated. You, you know, know and, uh, that you have touched on so many subjects there, um, ageism, just, just different things. It's just amazing to me um, of sometimes I don't want to say it nicely, the disregard or the brushing off of people when they reach a certain age category or whatever, just like, um, I can tell you so many stories, but without violating HIPAA, it, it's very frustrating. And it's just like sad because as a human being, to have your independence stripped away, no matter if it's for your own good, it's still not easy. It's not oh. easy. You've been driving all your life. They take away your car keys because you may be a danger to yourself or others. You have been preparing your meals or whatever it may be, the little things that we yeah. take for granted to have that stripped away and in a way that it's really like, well, this is what we're doing. You know, I can't imagine the mental um, detriment that we're doing to people when healthcare providers do that. It's not right, it's a way to do it. But, but, and, and I'll even take a step further. It's like when the healthcare providers see that, but then once they see it, the resources to get them help is so small. It's minimal. Oh my goodness. And then, then even when you do find resources, Nick, uh, there's somebody there, there's, who just has no clue about that generation. And they're talk, each generation has different idiosyncrasies. You can't, no offense, you're a millennial probably, <laughs> but to be talking it. to someone who's 
uh, baby boomer about different things or habits that they can create. It's not the same. I, and I'm not sure if I'm putting that in the right. Oh, no, 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 that's true. That, that I resent, I, I can relate to that because like when I'll go to those facilities, they'll typically tell me, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> You're too young, right? But, but even to put a bigger light on it. So there's three types of counselors in the state of Texas in most states that can be billed to insurance. Mm -hmm. LPC, licensed, uh, licensed professional counselor, mm -hmm. LCSW, licensed clinical social worker, and a psychologist. There's 22,000 LPCs in Texas. There's 10,000 LCSWs. There's only 5,000 psychologists. LPCs cannot be billed to Medicare. Mm -hmm. So that means there's 4.25 million Medicare recipients and only 17,000 available counselors that can be built to their insurance. Wow. If every single one of them saw 40 patients a week, wouldn't even make a dent in it. And that's because most of these counselors are working in hospitals, they're working for Baylor Scott and White, they're working for Medical City, they're working for Texas Health, they're not providing one-on-one -on -one counseling. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not only like the need is unmet, it's like the resources for when somebody is like, light bulb, we need to help this population, right. it's unavailable. Right, it's... and then cope that with COVID, oh, you know, because COVID. You know, it was just, ooh, we, the mental um, people are still it, being it, affected by it, you know? It, no, 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 they, they still are, but you know what's been actually pretty crazy is the amount of kids, mm. of seniors that want to get mental health because they feel guilty. I can see they that. They feel that guilt. Of I can see that. Putting them, you know, or carrying that burden of like, how do I pursue my career versus should I sacrifice and stay here instead of taking that job in New York? I see that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like the I mental strain. That. Yeah. I mean, you <sighs> guys have a big, humongous undertaking. So are your sessions in person? Are they on the phone? Or are they online? How do you guys provide your services? So, so our services, we try to base it off the client, you know, and, and we're not a we're not a nationwide company to where we we set a standard. We we try to cater to the person that's on the phone. Um, so everything is really dependent on where my counselors are at. So 80% of our business right now is telehealth. All, all of our assisted living facilities are all in person. So, you know, we'll contract a counselor to say, she's in this neighborhood, this is the facility she could take, and then, you know, get her or him into those facilities. Um, we can do one-on-one -on -one in person. It really depends on the counselor, but Medicaid, Medicaid, Medicare, Blue Cross, United Healthcare, Amerigroup, everybody has eliminated licensing for telehealth during the pandemic. So multiply that by gas prices and counselors are more than willing to work from home. Uh, they don't have to drive. So yeah. that eliminates drive time. So instead of doing four sessions a day, they can now do eight. Yeah. You know, so, so it's, it's economical for the counselors. Um, so we provide services in, in three ways, but kind of really depends on the client and the counselor. Uh, my, my whole strategy is let me connect the counselor with the patient as long as they can make a good connection then they will now manage their relationship. So your counselors really are the ones that are your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. You got to take good care of them. Yes. So how do you find good to. counselors? Well, the cool thing is, is about counselors is they genuinely like love what they do. Like the bottom dollar is not the biggest thing on their mind, which I, I, I appreciate. Obviously, you don't want everyone to take advantage of that. But they are more of like, is the culture right? Is the energy right? Are they aligned with my beliefs? Are they going in the right direction? Are they listening to me? Um, so, for example, I told you when I got here, the company is very spread out. Who are we taking care of? What are we doing? We're taking all payers. What are we doing? Yeah, I started listening to my counselors. It's like, Nick, I don't want to counsel an eight-year-old that says they have depression because typically the parents are the ones that need the counseling. Mm. I, I love this demographic. And that was what guided me to the Medicare 
senior population. It was really listening to the, the word of the masses, you know, listen to your people, find out what direction they want to go in and then create a strategy that's aligned with that. And our execution is going to be very high because they're bought in because it was their idea. It makes sense financially. Medicare pays on time. Like it, it, it was to a point where we can kind of pick who our patients are. We love that demographic. Our counselors love it. So feed into it, you know, and then it pulled out my heartstring with my, my being able to connect with it. So it all just kind of came together. Wow. So, okay. So most of your demographics are Medicare aged clients or baby boomers. Is that what you're saying? Or That's the, so yes, but no, Okay. that percentage is going up. This company had been around for 10 years before I got here. Okay. So, you know, weeding out the middle school referrals, you know, that has been a process without burning any bridges because you don't, you don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I've, I've slowly had to like, don't market that. If they come in, we kind of manage it based off of relationships. Um, but where we market, where we put our energy, where we go focus on is our 65 and up, 55 and up populations. So if someone such as myself, or maybe a non-health provider, you know, wanted to think about reaching out to you guys for their loved one, what would be the steps that they would need to take? Yeah, no, absolutely. So there's there's multiple ways that somebody can reach out to us. One, our phone number. They have it right here. 972. Nine, Two three three one zero one zero. If you if, if you call in, um, my team will definitely take care of you. Um, but also our website, we have a, an intake process on our website, mm-hmm. uh, assuresource.com, a s s u r a s u o r c e dot com. So assuresource.com uh, is another way to be able to get that information. Uh, but simply, if you call, you'll be catered to and taken care of. What do you cater to, like the sandwich generation as well? We, it, it really bases off our counselors. So w- w- the good thing is, is we're in network with every insurance in the state of Texas. Oh, that's great. So every insurance, your Medicaid, Medicare, Blue Cross, Humana, uh, Cobra, HMOs, Superior, Aetna. What about Cooks- the VA, uh, some of their, okay. Tri- TRICARE, yeah, TRICARE, TriWest. We're in network with literally any insurance you can think of, which that's is great. Awesome. Uh, but see, that's that's the the tug of war with our business is you only have a certain amount of counselors. Yeah. Right. There's not there, there's not enough counselors in the world to treat yeah. what we all need. Yeah. So you know we we kind of listen to our counselors and try to navigate you know where they want to go to keep them engaged. Uh, but we can technically take on any patient, anybody, any potential client. We can take on. So it sounds like you're always hiring for counselors, too, as well. Someone who has that passion to um, meet the needs of the people you serve. And the name of the game is is counseling. I mean, you have to take care of your counselors. You have to recruit because every counselor you bring on, you'll be able to get them patients. It's it's more of can you get the counselors to be able to fulfill your 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 mission? So that's why you you, I always they say happy wife, happy life. Happy clinician, happy life. <laughs> Keep your clinicians happy. That, that you better listen to them, treat them well, treat them with respect. Well, maybe you need to take this philosophy to some of the hospitals. <laughs> yep, I said it. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> You're not lying. You are not lying. Uh-uh, no, sir, uh, I am not. <laughs> uh, you are not lying. You are not lying. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's a the whole other topic. <laughs> if you don't treat them right, somebody else will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Nick, one more time, repeat how someone can get in touch with a sure source if they have a loved one that may be in need of your services. Yeah, no, absolutely. You can feel free to call us guys at 972-233-1010 or visit our website, uh, assuresource.com, A-S-S-U-R-A-S-O-U-R-C-E.com. So either way, you can can reach out to us or you can reach me on my personal cell at 361-425-1138. Get you guys taken care of.
Right? You can't, <laughs> you know, you can't help it. You know, you can't help it. Well, Nick, thank you so much for your time. This has been informative. It's been fun. And I truly thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and talk and educate us. Absolutely. You're going to have to teach me how to put that backdrop so I can get me one like yours. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll talk to you later, Ms. Adrian. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Health Chats Among Friends, where we bring you reputable resources from our local communities. Tune in next time for another amazing guest and another amazing resource. Thank you again, Nick. Bye, guys.